Hello YouTube, hi, my name is Mark and this is Nixon Motorsports. If you're new to this channel, we're all about motorsports from racing to exotic cars and even simulators. Today's video, this is part two of the Lotus Amira. If you recall, about two weeks ago, we picked up the brand new Amira and had a P code within, I think the first 66, 66 miles thereabouts something about auxiliary thermostat. So uh, with that, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna head over to the dealership here in about two, three hours, pick up the car. And uh, let me explain what happened. So um, after 66 miles on the car, we had a P code. Um, I put the scanner on the car, um, read the malfunction, and it said it had a um, stuck open auxiliary thermostat. And um, the car seemed to perform fine, had no idea what it was about. So we took the car into the dealership so they can address the, address the issue. All right, so we'll head out to the dealership, as I said, here in the next couple hours. We'll talk to the, the manager in the service department, find out exactly um, what they changed. Was it the whole module? Um, was it just a sensor maybe on the auxiliary thermostat and so on? Kind of interesting. Um, as I said though, this is controlled by the ECU, so this is not necessarily a Lotus um, malfunction. It's an AMG power plant, so engine, electronics, gearbox, all that is uh, AMG. So more than likely a fluke. But anyway, um, let's get into the dealership and let's talk to the service manager. Okay, we're here at the dealership picking up the Amira. They have it nice and clean and detailed which is fantastic. I'll talk to the uh, service department here in a minute, but um, looking forward to it. So this should have the fixed uh, thermostat and they had it on the scales too. So it'll be interesting to see if it uh, drives any different. So once I get in the car, I'll, uh, I'll bring you back with me. Okay, so we're here in the uh, Amira, just uh, gonna pull it out of the dealership. So the um, suspension, apparently the alignment was minimal um, as far as having an issue or, or being out of a line, that type of thing. So we'll see if there's any difference. Um, they did though make a small change to it. Um, so we'll obviously take it out here and drive, see what it feels like. Um, the engine uh, ECU light you know, for the thermostat seems to be taken care of, at least at the moment. Um, but uh, now it's time for a drive and uh, and uh, let's see what it does. Okay, so driving the uh, car after uh, service. Um, let's start with steering first. Um, it's super windy out right this minute, by the way. It's 30 plus mile an hour wind gust, but uh, doing about 70 miles an hour in the freeway, it, it does feel a, a little more stable. Um, they did a small alignment adjustment. I'm not sure exactly what they did, but they said it was slightly out of spec. So. Um, Whatever that was, it, it's good. I do like it. Now I might play with it myself down the road and, and play with tow a little bit or something, but um, it, it drives well. This, uh, the steering is, is, is very, I'll call it just very tight. It's a um, very responsive steering um, feel from the, you know, from the driver input. So I, I do like it. Yeah, very good. Um, and you know, at least so far, knock on wood, the uh, the engine malfunction, that thermostat, that secondary thermostat seems to be fixed. Um, I'm watching water temp, uh, and it's uh, it's at 194, so it's it's clearly uh, working. Um, so that's all good. So as of this moment, I would say the reports uh, the report is very positive. Well, on. Fortunately, I thought uh, the uh, engine uh, P code or the uh, fault was taken care of. Apparently not. So we uh, we drove the car about 25 miles, roughly, from the dealership, and uh, sure enough, the uh, the uh, uh, amber engine diagnostic light came on once again. What a bummer! Uh, so it's it's the same thing. It shows the uh, the fault of the auxiliary thermostat. Um, it's stuck wide open and uh, really a bummer, but uh, I went ahead and cleared it again a, m a minute ago after I took a screen capture of it. And uh, obviously we'll have to deal with the dealership and figure this out again, but uh, apparently this drama, this story is not uh, over with yet. 
you know, as, as, as I was told again, the dealership and by the way, earth motor cars here in Dallas, um, really good guys, actually, they've been super, uh, super courteous and helpful with us, but they, um, they replace the thermostat, the part itself, its sensor. Um, they put a couple miles on the car to make sure that it, it was working. And that's what I'm seeing. It, it, it basically, um, you can clear the code, you can, you can drive it 20, 30 miles roughly. Sure enough, it's going to come on again, um, which is what we saw. So, uh, maybe, maybe this yellow thing turns out to be a turd and it's a big, uh, it's a big uh, lemon, right? Who knows? I don't want to go to that extreme yet because this is should be something fixable, but uh, that's what we got. So um, that's uh, that's the latest. So as I mentioned, brought the car home. It was at service. Had this auxiliary thermostat uh, replaced, actually, thinking that it was a one-off, no big deal. And um, as I noted just a minute ago the service light came on again. So um, <laughs> I started to dig around a little bit and um, lo and behold, the M139 engine itself has had issues very similar to this um, for the last couple years. So uh, uh, Mercedes has been using the 139, the M139 in several uh, of their um, their cars. Uh, one that comes to mind, the C43 is one example. Um, I think the C45, again, don't quote me on that, but something along that line. So my story in the situation of this air code is not unique. Uh, let me try to explain what I've found. And uh, again, this is all to my surprise. Now, let me back up a little bit as well. We purchased the, the Lotus with the AMG power plant um, for a couple reasons, reputation, power, you know, performance. The motor's been out for a while, a double clutch gearbox. You get it, right? Um, the, ex the expectation of a solid, uh, well-built, uh, highly tuned engine uh, was the appeal. Um, versus the Toyota, the V6 motor, which is a decent motor uh, in the other Emiras. So that's why. And... Um, Anyway, after digging into this a little bit, so what I've found is that this is not that unique. Apparently around 2022, uh, 23, there's been several reports of customers with the M139 engine. Again, Mercedes at that point, not Lotus, but the same power plant that have had the same issue where the getting the car home, the first couple miles on it, um, the service light would come on. It would be this auxiliary thermostat is one of the more common, the common uh, problems. And uh, there's been this back and forth with dealerships trying to service and repair and sort through what the issue is. What I've read, now again, don't quote me on this. I'm not an expert. Uh, I don't work for AMG. Um, but uh, here's what I've read is that the issue has been around Apparently, the castings of these motors, um, castings, right, are basically in, uh, metal that's uh, in a um, sand-based mold, and um, when it comes out of the mold, they have to clean it up, deburr it, of course, remove the, the sand from the castings, that kind of thing, and apparently there's been residual um, sand uh, in primarily the cooling system that has caused these issues for several other customers. And, um, you know, the cool system itself, the cooling system, not only the engine block, but the turbo and so on. So it's been a, it's been a big problem. Reading further about it though, uh, there have been cases where customers have also had um, uh, sand contamination in their oil system. So in the oil passages and so on, from these AMG, these M139 engine blocks, <laughs> which has resulted to complete engine replacement uh, and so on. So <laughs> it looks like this story um, is going to continue for a while. It looks like uh, 
reality, we probably will not have the Lotus Amira in our possession, I'm going to say probably for several months, um, only because of what I've read, it looks like it's a much bigger problem. Now, just a word of advice, if you are looking at the Lotus Amira uh, as a car, um, so far I could tell you with the limited miles that we have on it, I, we love the, the lines, the beauty of the car, the styling, awesome. It's lightweight, um, good power, I would say, performance from what we can tell. Um, but I would seriously consider the Toyota power plant at this point. Um, if you're going to purchase a, uh, a Lotus Amira, uh, until there's some uh, resolution around the AMG, the M139 motor, um, it, it might be a problem for you. So I would be careful with that. Now, I will also say the dealership that we're using, and this is Earth Motor Cars, Motor Cars, I think it is, in Dallas. Um, very friendly, uh, very courteous. Um, but um, once you take the car off the lot, uh, it's on you, right? So even if the car is a prototype, which apparently these new Lotus uh, AMG Amiras are, um, you're, you're stuck with it, right? So, um, you know, we uh, entertained that conversation about why don't you just take it back? You guys take care of it and solve this with AMG. Just give us another car and we can go on our way. Uh, that's not really an option. So I'm only sharing all of this again. Sorry, long winded response, but I think you need, need to know this um, and for you to um, digest if you're going to purchase an, an Amira. So um, where am I at? So uh, the car is not at the dealership at the, at the moment. Um, I'm going to take it out there in about two weeks and drop it off and um, uh, document everything at this point going forward um, well. Um, I will also do a quick oil analysis on the engine um, I don't suspect there's any issues. I'm not going to drain the oil. I'm not going to do any of that. Um, but I'm going to send a, a little bit of oil out purely for analysis just to see um, independently if there is any uh, debris contaminants in the oil system. And uh, that's it. So subscribe if you haven't. Um, I would appreciate it. If you're interested in the Lotuses, it might be a good reason to turn on that uh, notification piece. I'll probably have an update on the progress of our Emira here, probably every two, three weeks, I'm, I'm thinking thereabouts, uh, just to keep you informed with what we find, what the outcome is and so on, okay? So <laughs> fun stuff, right? But that's it for now. Appreciate your comments and uh, support. Until next time, ciao.